president, and you recall this, blurted out his desire to slap tariffs on steel and aluminum imports in a meeting with industry executives. That meeting right there on your screen exactly one week ago today. That sent the markets and Team Trump scrambling. With more questions than answers, the Dow spasm. These are one-week charts that you can see, and you saw them fall. This is on the left-hand side of the screen, but then moved higher and then got herky-jerky as they reacted. And you saw foreign countries, our allies, reacting bitterly, threatening retaliatory tariffs of their own on U.S. goods if the president goes through with this. S&P mirrored the Dow, recovering a bit this week. But what's the backstory on how today's event, as I said, now 27 and a, and a half minutes away, how did it come to pass? One person in particular had been nudging the administration to move in this direction for months. He runs a company out of Cleveland called Majestic Steel, which buys the metal from mills, processes it, and then sells it to manufacturers to make things like HVACs, cars, and appliances. The CEO of that company, Majestic Steel, met with the president last fall to explain firsthand the difficulties the steel industry is really facing, particularly from cheap Chinese imports. Todd LeBeau, that man is here in a Fox Business exclusive. A big day for you. Do you wish you were there in D.C.? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm here in L.A. right now, but uh, big day definitely for the steel industry. I would imagine. Um, the president tweeted this morning that he wants to protect the steel industry. He has made that very clear. But then he went on to say in this particular tweet, which was about seven hours ago, we need at the same time to show great flexibility and cooperation. That was the tweet. We could put it back up. And cooperation over when it comes to our real friends. And we need to treat them fairly, especially they need to treat us fairly on trade and military. I don't know. That seems to, to indicate that there are going to be some exemptions and that could move steel stocks lower. And would that be disappointing to you? I've always thought the global tariff was just the beginning of this process. I think that now it's a matter of how the action is taken from here. I think that exemptions are going to be a part of the process, and it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. The steel supply chain is very complex. I mean, we have steel producers here that source slab and, and re-roll that material, and so those producers are very important to the steel supply chain as well. So I, I don't think that the exemptions scare me. I think the exemptions are a part of the process and a necessary part of the process. I think the global tariff is... The to begin the solution, it'll stop the bleeding, and that's what we need to do to, to get the industry back in the right place. What would be the best case scenario? What one thing are you really listening for here? Yeah, I think right now it's let's show the world that we're serious about this. We see and recognize the importance of a domestic steel industry and what it means to our country. And then from there, we look at who's playing fair and who's not playing fair. And we look at it by country and by product. And then, as the president suggested, we can adjust this tariff up or down to make sure that we're handling the situation in the right way because you don't want to negatively impact the U.S. economy, U.S. jobs, and the U.S. market. And there's a lot of different things that are driving uh, the decision here and, and you got to think about the whole supply chain but from a long-term perspective if you take a step back and look at it okay. our domestic steel industry has been deteriorating so we need to make sure that we stop that and then we take action moving forward to, to have a healthy strong steel industry you have particularly pointed out China as a cheater as the worst offender you're not the only ones there were more than a hundred and twenty Republicans who have signed a letter saying forget our allies make sure to focus and target and, you know, the underscoring line here was that it should be China. We just had Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, on this show exactly at this time yesterday. I pushed him on that. Listen, and then I'll have you react. Just target China. What do you say to well, that? Well, it's not physically possible to just do that. Let me give you some real-world numbers. China has shipping us less steel now than they did five years ago directly. But what they're doing is backdooring it through other countries. How about targeting China and the so-called other countries among them? We understand Vietnam and then let countries like Europe, who certainly are our allies, uh, remain sort of dry from this. 
Yeah, I completely agree with Secretary Ross. I mean, I've seen this unfold. I've seen China ramp up uh, capacity uh, over the years and then dump steel in the U.S. And then I've seen them circumvent product, and it's a moving target. And so I agree with him. The challenge is uh, the countries move. So, you know, we, we saw China shipping a lot of steel here, and then we take action. And next thing you know, it's Vietnam, and now it's Malaysia. And, and so the countries are, are continuing to change. So I'm, I'm not sure that if you try to play a whack-a-mole game and get into a price war with China that we could win that. So I think that that's why this action is necessary. Uh, the U.S. dollar is weakening against the Chinese, uh, sorry, the Mexican peso and the Canadian dollar. We're watching this closely because there have been reports in the last couple of minutes that it is China that is going to be mentioned, but they only really create about 3% of the imports in, in steel to the U.S., that Canada and Mexico are the two, and you can see them moving higher against the dollar right now. Those are the two countries that will be temporarily exempt. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that we want to make sure that we're not uh, impacting strong trade partners like Canada, Mexico, but we also have to be careful that if we put a global tariff on and we don't actually address those countries, we could see product come through those countries. And as you suggested, with the currency uh, exchange rate, then those jobs can be going to Canada and that production can be going to Canada as well. So we got to make sure that we prevent slabs coming into Canada and then ship to the United States or other products as well. That's just an example, but I, I think that we need to make sure that we're thinking about that. Well, where are you going to be when you watch this announcement, which is now about 24 minutes away? I think I'm going to have to stay in this studio and watch right here from the Fox <laughs> Studios. Okay. Uh, I don't think I want to get caught up in L.A. traffic. So okay. I'm looking Our bureau forward to says the you can hang out there. You know what? Appreciate hang it. out. And if, you, if there's a sort of a gut reaction here, we're happy to bring you back on if you can stay. Todd Lebo of Majestic Steel.